many years have you been doing popo? This was my first time. How did you find out about it? You know, I was trying to remember. I think somebody sent me a link and said, hey, you should do this. And I thought, and it was the last day to sign up. And I was right under the wire. Right under the wire. It was yeah. awesome. It was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you remember who it was? No, I don't. Popo Angel. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I have certainly afterwards sent out the, you know, have shared it with friends. And I was, um, took over a, a half an hour poetry show on KPTZ as, when I was doing it. And I um, read some poems from my, the project and then talked about it. So hopefully people will have, more people have found out about it. We are attempting to get one billion people to do the fest. Very good. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> what, what attracted you to something like this in the first place? Well, I just, I, I love the idea of, I've done a lot of ekphrastic poetry. So I love parent and I like, and I like the idea of, um, I've traveled a lot. I mean, one of the things was I had a huge collection of postcards from art exhibits. My daughter lives in England. We lived in London for a while, tons of art cards, lots of, um, and I thought, oh, this would be a great thing to do. Not only will I have to, it'll force me to write every day, but I can spread out some of these beautiful postcards around. And I liked the idea of the draft, you know, just drafts, just creating right on the spot, you know, rather than the revision. And because I had a really tough summer, my brother, my oldest brother, who's one of my best friends ever, was, has had a brain disease and he was getting really, really sick. And um, I was involved a lot with his care and with his, my sister-in-law and their girls. And um, he died in November. So I was just been a really hard time. And I, it, having that every day for, I actually, I think I sent out 34 postcards was so good for me just to, to get writing. And I actually put the cards together in a book. I called them, I made a, my own little, my own book with them. Um, and did had them printed with the typed, you know, I did a little bit of revision and typed them up and um, I called it them postcards from the edge of a summer. Because when people would ask me how my summer was, I'd say, well, it's been a summer. <laughs> it's been t really tough. I'm sorry about your brother. Thank you. Yeah. I've got three siblings all younger than me. Mm-hmm. When you write, now, when I write, let me, let me state it this way. When I yeah. write an ekphrastic poem, mm -hmm. I can't, <laughs> I can't stick to the image. So, you know, a lot of the times I forget even what card I'm writing on. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. yet, but yet you're able to write ekphrastic poetry. Tell us about, walk us through the process. You go through your massive surplus postcard collection. You find the one that's going to work for the next person on the list. What happens then? Well, um, I'm not always, the image is not, the text is not always linked to the image, but usually there's a, there's a glimmer of something. Like the poem that I'll read to you later, whenever, is, um, was actually a postcard from the Book of Kells. I was in Ireland. And so that's beautiful illustrated manuscript, right? So I got, I saw that it said on the back of the postcard, you know, illuminated manuscript. And I, the idea of illumination. So I just, rift on the idea of light right and sometimes there was another uh, postcard that had a it was beautiful it was from a exhibit at the tate gallery and it was a the woman it was all these blues it was beautiful i love blue and so i just riffed on blue you know but and sometimes like there was a photography i went to the international uh, wildlife photography exhibit at the natural history museum in london uh, several times and I had some beautiful photographs from that and one was a bobcat and I wrote a poem actually about seeing a bobcat when I was in Winthrop in the, and I was on a snowy day have it crossed the road so there's a lot of different ways but I did a I did a um, project of ekphrastic poetry when I was in London and um, sometimes I got into the story you know I saw an exhibit and one of the was a was a a painting that was uh, supposed to be Noah's two daughters on the on the ark, 
and I ended up speaking in the voice of one of the daughters. The, the dove had come back and she was holding the dove. And so I ended up inhabiting that story and that voice. And other things I did, I did, I challenged myself because there was such a story in that particular painting. And I, I wrote some poems in response to um, the Turner Prize, which is very contemporary art, right? There's sometimes not much of a story. So just something will come to me, something will come in my mind. And I love, Ekphrastic, um, there was a great, uh, Alfred Korn wrote a quote about how Ekphrastic poetry actually is kind of this confluence of the, po of the poet's life and whatever's, whatever is happening in there. And I think that's true in a way. So, so you, you, you're, you're there at your desk, you have your list, you have your card, you have your pen, and uh, you, do you address it to the, to the person who's next on the list? Are you thinking, no, you just tell us, how, what, what do you do? So I got the, I would choose a card. Sometimes the card would be really easy to, for me. I just thought, oh, I'm gonna do this one today. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to give them away because I was like, oh, I really like this postcard. But I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna send it out in the world. And then I would just, I'd just take a look at it. And like I said, I would something, either, either a color, an image. I did a few that were from the Picasso Museum that had the sea. Definitely um, what was happening in my life. There's loss, there's a thread of loss there's a thread of the summer and the sea and garden, flowers, things like that. Somebody's trying to Facebook me in the middle of my interview. Bad person, bad person. <laughs> no respect. Picasso Museum. Yeah, the Picasso in the Southern France. Yeah, so they had some beautiful images of the sea and um, oh, Ulysses, Ulysses in the sea. And so I ended up writing about the sea that I know here. And I'm on Discovery Bay over on the other side of Port Townsend. So, yeah. Sam, just, li Sam lived uh, Cape George. Oh, yeah. Middle Point I'm, Road. I'm on Huckleberry Place, which is just, I'm on Cape George, but it's just one street. One street, it's like 17 houses on this street. And um, so we're on kind of our own little private, I guess. I'm at the end of the road in a little house at the end of the road with a lot of big elder cedars. It's very private. How does the Postcard Fest augment your own poetry composition practice? Well, I loved it that it just, it made me write every day. It kind of got me, and it, and it gave me a way to really, it, it just kind of gave me a way to write about what was going on. <laughs> with Tommy and everything, you know, but yeah, I think just the discipline, but I just, um, and it then, and then I had 33 drafts to take a look at. And so that was, that was really what a wonderful thing, right? It's just your resource. So I have all these poems. Some of them I had, I didn't do much about some of them. I, I, what I saw was there's, you know, there's a saying that every writer has 20 favorite words. <laughs> I was like, okay, I see mine, you know, dusk, blue. There is definitely some of the same words were coming out. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to really put this in my own little collection, I can't have so many of those, right? So I did a little shifting of words. And You make word clouds? Word clouds. I make word banks. So you take, you take your manuscript and you put it in the Wordle program, W-O-R-D-L-E. Okay. Put it in and say make word cloud, and then there are ways. I actually downloaded Wordle on the Mac. Uh huh. And then, you know, if you don't like the font, you can change the font. You don't like the way they're arranged, you can change that. And uh, based on how much, how often you use a particular word, it'll make it bigger or smaller in the cloud. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would see blue a lot in this. Yeah. One. Well, we're all seeing blue these days. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Do you sit? So you sent thirty-four cards out. So you did send a couple of bonus cards. What okay. guides your bonus card um, uh, efforts? I wanted to send one to you, so I did as a thank you. So I sent one to you, and um, actually, there's been a couple. There was a call out on on our Facebook page. There was a young woman, just or I think she's young. I don't know, Jessica, that said having a really hard time and. I'd love to have one. So we've been actually conversing. I've been kind of checking in on her because I, I don't, she told me what's been going on in her life. She's having a really hard time. And so I was, I've been trying to, trying to uh, support her a little bit. <laughs> Tell me what's on the card. Do you remember the card you sent me? 
Yeah, it had a Buddha on it. It was oh. very kind of a watercolorish. I kept the. I can show you what it looks like. It looks like this. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, I remember. Um, do you want to read? Do you have it? Do you want to read that? It's not my best piece. <laughs> you don't want to read it. Okay. Do you, um, I'm I'm going to. No. That's not it. That's not it. No. Mine's the Buddha. It's, it's a French pastel on paper. A French Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> the French Buddha, yes. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm looking through your 500 postcards. You know, it's, um, it's fantastic. I mean, I just, you know, uh, when people say, I only got 25, I didn't get 31. I, you know... <laughs> I don't know what to tell. I, I, I like, I empathize, but I really, I don't understand. I mean, I can understand. There were years where I didn't get all the cards I was supposed to get, but I, get I didn't get, I did not get all the cards I was supposed to get, but I, you know, whatever. I got some, so. I'm whatever happy. is, whatever is right. I got, I got a second one from Chris Beaver because hers got lost for a while. So she said, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'm just, and here's another, uh, this isn't your, yours either, yeah. but it's another kind of religious or Eastern yeah. wisdom yeah. one. Um, I think uh, people think I'm a Buddhist, I guess, which is okay. Um, <laughs> I, I Dude, have, Buddha showed up on my cards for this for some reason. I'm not, yeah, that's it. There that's it is. It, mm -hmm. it uh, wasn't my finest poem, but that's Yeah, okay. there's blue, there's blue in there. <laughs> yeah, and a Buddha quote, very nice. Um, so you say you uh, every day writing a poem every day. So you don't start when you get the list on the fifth or sixth. You wait till the first of August and then crank out thirty. No, 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 no. I started. I started right away. Once you got me. Once you gave me the list, I started writing because I knew that life was going to be complicated, and I really wanted to. Like I was a commitment. I was committed to doing this. I was going to send out at least thirty-one, and so I started. I sent out before August first. Yeah, and it was good. it was a good thing because everything just went to kind of hell in August. So you know, I I write sometimes three three or four in a row. I remember the last the day before the on August thirtieth. I'm like, I think I have six more, and I'm just going to crank them out <laughs> and be done with it. Um, um. So uh, tell us three things you love about Popo. Three things I love. I love the connection, connecting people and poets and artists. I think it's, it's brilliant. Um, I loved that it got me back. It, it really, um, I committed to it and I stuck with it and I wrote every, at least a card a day, which I thought that was really good for me. And it's put me in touch with you. Yeah. All right, that's two and a half, I guess. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> three, if you were the po queen of Popo, and you may be someday, we don't know, uh, what, what would you change about the fest? Boy, I'd almost want to see it go longer. Like let people just write, just put, give people that the whole list and say, go for it. You got do it all year. Some people do ask for the whole list. And yeah. um, lately there are people who are like, look, I'm not comfortable with my name going out to 400 and, 25 people. So oh. I think I might ask a, a question in future registrations that's like, would you mind if your address went to other people besides the one on your list? And if they right. say no, then don't do it. Uh, yeah. So that might be one change that we would do. Yeah. Um, are there any poetry communities online or otherwise that you think should might like to hear about the fest? Well, like you said, I, I don't know about online. I mean, I think I think the Facebook is always a way to kind of get the word out to other people. Cause I have writing friends in, uh, well, in Ireland, actually, I, I write with some Irish poets. I went to Anamkara in the Barra Peninsula. I don't know if you know Ireland much, but so I went a, a little bit. Yeah, it's a beautiful part, and, you know, kind of south of the Dingle Peninsula in the Western. And I write with some Irish poets and I'm gonna be meeting, going back over there and we're gonna, we're taking up some residency in some little cottages in some new place that, uh, they're all, I, there's four of them, and then I'm gonna be the fifth person. I'm the only one coming from the States. And I'm gonna let them tell them about it. And um, I have shared it with uh, many of my friends here, 
have not writers friends hadn't heard about it so i've been telling them so t clear is is uh, offering people to go for a week in ireland studying with two irish poets in september poets at carol holly poets at what carol holly carol holly c a r r o w h o l l y oh okay well look at that you want to yeah, look at I, the registrations opening up soon i understand we got um, you know we got these cottages for 90 euro a week apparently they're very rustic and we prepare our own food it'll be fun i, I don't couldn't even i can't even tell you where it is but i just let them take care of it and i sent my deposit in <laughs> is there a stove yes there is a stove yeah, little, little co yeah we it's like single little cottages everybody's self kind of self-contained we'll all be together that's, that's far fun. out Isn't that gonna be cool yeah yes. Yeah, well, I have, do you know, have you heard of Leanne O'Sullivan? She's a young Irish poet that she works, she teaches at Cork University. The name does sound familiar. I worked with her. Uh, I went over there to Anam Cara, which is a poet and artist retreat in the Barra, on the Barra um, in 2016 and worked with her for a week with the, that's how I met all these other people. There were, I think there were like eight of us or something. And we worked with Leanne. She's a phenomenal writer. And, uh, then I went back in 2018 and was supposed to be with Leanne again, and she had some health issues. And so we worked with Adam Wyeth out of Dublin, and he's kind of a playwright poet and really strong in mythology. But I just love being over there with those these people. They love their place, right? They love the land. They love poetry. They have this family stories. Leanne's, oh, the O'Sullivan's have been on the Barra forever. And so she's just got this sense, which I, love that sense of place so much you know yeah so the spontaneity is one aspect of it the community is one aspect of it and then as one begins to do the fest other challenges or opportunities beckon mm -hmm. like um for me in the last couple of years it was making my own cards have you thought about that oh yeah because i love i do actually love to do collage i just didn't have the and I didn't have it together this summer. I think it's definitely something I might would think about in the future. And I wanted, like I said, I had all these beautiful postcards from all over the world kind of, and I'll, you know, and I was like, I'm just, I need to kind of spread the, spread the joy here. So, but yes, I would definitely do that. I, I do love doing collage. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah. Would you want to read that postcard poem? Oh, sure. The one. Okay. So this is from the book. This is the first one I wrote. It's from the book. That's the picture. If you can see it from the book of Kells. And it's, uh, I, so I kind of titled this one actually illumination make of yourself a light says the Buddha, which makes me think of blue dusk, the way far mountains settle in dimming light as I sit and watch sun flicker on the surface of sea. And I wonder, if at times my words gleam, even in the shadows, among the losses, the many vanishings. Fantastic. Thank you. Blue is really, the color. So it really set the tone for me for the summer. Yeah. yeah. You know, the fest has a way, and poetry in general, I think, has a way of marking times in our lives and it's that's a real gift of art you know I write an American sentence every day so when I read one from 10 years ago I remember better because of capturing that image in oh, yeah. syllables so it's like a time machine for me I, I've written I've got a collection that I'd like that I I've submitted a few times but had no takers it's called the missing um, my son was killed uh, he was 20. He was killed in an avalanche up in British Columbia. And um, I've written, it's helped writing those poems. It's not, The Missing's not all about him, but it's also about my aging parents. It's about leaving. I got divorced and left the Metau after 26 years. There's a lot of joy in the senses of place, but there's also a lot of that marking transitions and people it's just that building the bridge poetry for me is like building a bridge between the living and the dead the past and now dream land, dream time you know all that it's just been a beautiful thing for me yeah it's really helped me <laughs> and uh yeah i can't imagine my life without poetry really 
Losing a son gives you something in common with your friend Sheila Bender. I know. That's how we met. Yeah, she's a very dear friend of mine. She lives right by. I can walk to her house. <laughs> yeah. Right. Tell her I said hi. I will. She is, so she and I, Gail County and Holly Hughes and another writer, Sharon Carter, are in the same writers group. Yeah. Are you the folks who are taking over from Bill Mawinney? Yes. Right on. I'm one of those persons, yeah. Uh, Bill's yeah. a very high bar for that. Uh, he that certainly movie. has. He yeah. certainly has. We, and we're like so happy. We're so happy to have four of us because I don't know how he did it for 13 years. And I was supposed to be. So we had an event in um, October that was Mark. It was all five of us were going to read our read our work and and uh bill was that was his last one to kind of MC and all that and i was right as my brother was dying it was right after my brother died so i couldn't go so but anyway yeah i love bill bill was the first he heard me read a poem at an open mic and then asked me to read at northwinds for one of those evenings as a and i was so thrilled i it, you know, really made a huge difference to me to have somebody really believe in my work like that. And he's been just a really dear friend to me. Yeah. A real joy to engage with you. Thanks for your inspired participation in the fest this past year. Well, thank you very much. It's really nice to meet you. And I hope that you'll look me up sometime when you come to Port Townsend. I'd love to have some coffee or tea or whatever and be really fun to, to, to know you. I would like that. And, uh, you know, we have a very nice view here in Rainier Beach. If I uh, turn the Turn the phone around or the uh, Mac around and unplug it. Oh, wow. Nice. I can kind of see. It. Oh, yeah. Right on the water. Yeah. It's yeah. nice. It's nice. So. Yeah, very nice. All right, Linda. Stay out of trouble. Okay, I'll try. You too. I'll see you around. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye.